Question 6. Part I says, given that y is greater than 0, find the integral of 3y minus 4 over y times 3y plus 2 dy. Before carrying out the integration, we need to rewrite the integrand using partial fractions. So we can write 3y minus 4 over y times 3y plus 2 as a over y plus b over 3y plus 2. The common denominator is this, so multiplying top and bottom of the first fraction by 3y plus 2 over 3y plus 2 gives and multiplying the top and bottom of the second fraction by y over y gives Because we have a common denominator, we can write it over as a single fraction. Looking at the left hand side and the right hand side, the denominators are the same, so we can make the numerators the same as well. So we have 3y minus 4 equals a 3y plus 2 plus by. To find the value of a, we'll need to make this y equal to 0. To find the value of b, we'll need to make this bracket equal to 0. If we let y equal 0, the left hand side becomes 3 times 0 minus 4 equals a times 3 times 0 plus 2 plus b times 0. This simplifies to give minus 4 equals 2a. Divide both sides by 2 to get a equals minus 2. To find the value of b, we need to make this bracket equal to 0. If 3y plus 2 is 0, then y equals minus 2 thirds. So when y equals minus 2 thirds, sub that back into the equation, we get 3 times minus 2 thirds minus 4 equals a times 0 plus b times minus 2 thirds. The threes cancel here to give minus 2 minus 4 which is minus 6 equals minus 2 thirds b. The minuses cancel to get b on its own we can times by 3 divide by 2 so b equals 9. So this integration now becomes We need to remember the rules of integration that states the integral of f dash of x over f dx. So if we have a fraction where the numerator is a derivative of the denominator, then this integrates to give us ln of the denominator plus c. In the first integral, the derivative of the bottom is 1, but we have a minus 2 on the top. So we can write this as minus 2. We can take the minus 2 outside to get the integral of 1 over y. Plus the integral. The integral of 3y plus 2 is 3. But we have a 9 on the top. So we can change the 9 into a 3 times 3. So keep the 3 outside. And you put a 3 on top. Three times three is still nine so we haven't actually changed the question we've just changed the way it looks and the numerator is now a derivative of the denominator using this rule this will become ln y so minus two times ln y 
this gives us ln of 3y plus 2 but because of the free outside it will be 3 times ln of 3y plus 2 plus our constant of integration part 2 a of the question says use the substitution x equals 4 sine squared theta to show that this equals this where lambda is a constant to be determined the question gives us the substitution that we should be using so what we need to do is rewrite this integrand and the dx in terms of thetas so we can write the square root of x over 4 minus x as the square root of 4 sine squared theta over 4 minus 4 sine squared theta There's a 4 that appears in each term, so we can divide it by 4 to get the square root of sine squared theta over 1 minus sine squared theta. Remembering the identity sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1, we can rearrange this to get cos squared on its own, so cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. We can then change the denominator into cos squared theta. Remembering the rules of thirds that states the square root of m over n is the same as the square root of m over the square root of n, we can split this up to get the square root of sine squared theta over the square root of cos squared theta. Squaring and square rooting are opposites of each other, so this gives sine theta over cos theta. We know that this equals to tan, but it's best to leave it in this form for now. You'll see later. Starting with this again, so x equals 4 sine squared theta, Instead of writing it sine squared theta, let's write it as 4 sine theta squared. Differentiating with respect to theta, we get dx d theta equals, the 2 comes down to multiply with the 4 to give 8. The bracket stays the same and we subtract 1 from the power so we get sine theta. And then we multiply by the derivative of sine which is cos theta. now becomes so we now need to change the dx if we multiply it by d theta over d theta which is one so we're not changing anything technically we can write it as d theta d theta and we can change this dx d theta with our eight sine theta cos theta so this integration now becomes this is sine theta over cos theta times dx d theta which is 8 sine theta cos theta and then d theta we didn't change it into tan here because now we can see that the cos thetas cancel to leave us with the integral of 8 sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta and we can take the 8 outside. The final thing that's left is to change the limits of the integration. So to find the limits, when x equals 0, we have 4 sine squared theta equals 0. Divided by 4 still gives 0, and the square root of 0 is still 0, so we have sine theta equals 0. To find theta, we'll do sine to the minus 1 of 0, which is still 0. So the limit, which used to be 3 and 0, the 0 still stays as a 0. When x equals 3, 
we get 4 sine squared theta equals 3. Divide by the 4 to get 3 quarters and square root to get sine theta equals the square root of 3 over 4. Using the same third rule that we mentioned earlier, we can split this into root 3 over root 4, which is root 3 over 2. And so to find theta, we will do the arc sin of root 3 over 2 which gives us pi over 3. So the 3 now becomes pi over 3 when dealing with theta. So lambda is equal to 8. Part B of the question says, hence use integration to find this, giving your answer in the form a pi plus b, where a and b are exact constants. To carry out this integration, we use the result we had for part b, so this we now know equals to integrate sine squared theta we need to change it uh, to a different form so here we need to remember the double angle formula the double angle formulas are not given to you but you can derive them from the addition formulas which are given to you in the formula booklet so the double angle formula for cos 2 theta there are different forms of this, but the one we need to use is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. We can rearrange this to get sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2. Or we can also write this as a half times 1 minus cos 2 theta. So this integration now becomes... Eight times a half gives us four, so we can take the half outside and leave it as a four. We can keep the four outside once we've integrated, and the integration of one minus cos two theta is theta minus a half sine two theta. Remember the limits are between pi over 3 and 0. We sub in pi over 3 and then we take away what we get for sub in 0. When we sub pi over 3 we get pi over 3 minus a half sin of 2 times pi over 3. When we sub in 0, we get 0 minus a half sin 2 times 0. 2 times 0 is 0, and sin of 0 is 0, so this whole thing is 0. 2 times pi over 3 is 2 pi over 3. The sin of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. A half times root 3 over 2 is root 3 over 4. So this simplifies to give 4, and then in brackets, pi over 3 minus root 3 over 4. Multiplying out the bracket gives us a final answer of 4 pi over 3 minus root 3. So a equals 4 over 3, and b equals minus root 3.